It's five o'clock in Boston, so I'm going to say good evening. I'm Dr. Marcy Pitkatsufis, Director of the Doctoral Program at the Graduate School of Social Work. Welcome to our 2014 webinar. Today, we plan to discuss a number of issues relevant to your possible application to our program. Let me make a few introductions. I'm grateful that we have several experts available to help you with your application. As I mentioned, I'm Dr. Marcy pitkett Sufis. I'm a professor at the BC Graduate School of Social Work, and I direct the Social Work PhD program. My colleague, Dr. Jim Levin, who directs the International Social Welfare Program, is traveling today and unable to join us, but he does send his welcome and greetings. On this slide, we have photos of Dr. Ali Burke, who's the Assistant Director of the International Social Welfare Doctoral Program. We also have available to you, throughout the application process, some doctoral students, including Melissa Harry and Drew Reynolds. Finally, I'd like to introduce you to one of our associate deans, Teresa Shermer, who is also available to assist with students. It's our understanding that we have had over 30 individuals register for this session. All of you are thinking about applying to our doctoral program, and I want to extend you a very special welcome. So let's take a peek at the topics I'm going to cover this evening. On this slide, you'll see that the first topic is our welcome and orientation. In a minute, we'll finish the introduction by giving you a profile of those of you who register for tonight's seminar. Then we'll move to the second topic and give you a short introduction to Boston College and to our PhD program. We'll devote some time to the curriculum since our courses provide a key structure to the doctoral studies experience. And in addition, we'll share with you some information about the research opportunities available to our students. At that point, we're going to turn our attention to some of the logistics about applying to the program. In particular, we'll give you some information about the process and review with you the financial support package that we're able to provide to our students. We plan to complete the presentation part of this uh, webinar in about 30 minutes. And at the end, for those of you who are with us this evening, we'll have time for questions and answers. On this slide, we've summarized some of the information about the group of those of you who completed the survey after you registered for the webinar. You'll get used to the fact that as doctoral students, we look for all appropriate opportunities to gather data so that we get in the research habit. In the left graph, we've included information about your highest degrees earned. Nearly three-fourths of you have a master's degree. Virtually all of the applicants accepted into our program come with a master's. Indeed, most of them do have an MSW. As you might expect, the PhD program is very rigorous. So those of you who have only bachelor's degrees might want to consider pursuing a master's degree before you apply. The graph on the right-hand side of the slide tells us that approximately half of you reside in Massachusetts. In general, a smaller percentage of the incoming students typically resides in Massachusetts before they matriculate into our program. It might be of interest to you if I tell you a bit about the applicants for the 2014 academic year. We had approximately 70 applicants for the four to five places. While a slight majority had an MSW, there was a substantial minority with a different master's. About 75% of our applicants are between the ages of 24 and 34 years of age, with about another quarter over the age of 35. In general, about 20 to 25 percent of our applicants are from countries other than the United States. 
we want to give a special thanks to those of you who sent us a few comments when you registered. We've selected some of these comments that seem to capture dominant themes which emerged in our short survey. A number of you indicated that you either want to be able to teach, conduct research, or engage in policy analysis. It was great to see these comments because the BC program has been designed to prepare you to develop competencies in each of these areas. Several of the respondents shared with us their interest in issues or population groups. One of the many opportunities afforded by our program is that each student is expected and encouraged to develop an area of eminence that reflects the student's passion and experience. As you can see in the second and third bullets, the range of topics relevant to a social work PhD can be quite varied. One important thing for you to remember is that you should think about ways to share your learning goals and your passions in your application package. Let's focus now on the university, Boston College. While you'll find that virtually all graduate schools of social work focus on social justice for vulnerable populations, one of the special attributes of our PhD program is the fact that our School of Social Work is nestled in a university which echoes this mission of social justice. In addition, Boston College has a strong commitment to the highest possible educational standards. This will be important to your experience if you decide to apply. As you can see from the excerpt of the, on this slide, BC has been strengthened by more than a century and a half of dedication to academic excellence. Our university commits itself to the highest standards of teaching and research in the undergraduate, graduate, and professional programs, and to the pursuit of a just society through its own accomplishments the work of its faculty and staff, and the achievements of its graduates. By providing a professional framework that provides individual dignity, respects diversity, and seeks distributed justice in the Catholic Jesuit tradition, Boston College instills in social workers the knowledge, values, and skills to initiate and sustain change and to provide visionary le leadership. At the school, it's part of our mission to cultivate an atmosphere of intellectual discipline and innovative faculty and student scholarship and research that contributes to the knowledge base of the profession and improves society's understandings of the systems in which individuals, families, groups, organizations, and communities thrive. Our curriculum is sharply focused to meet the needs of a changing society, and the School of Social Work remains an international leader in shaping the education of professional social workers. As I'm sure many of you know, our School of Social Work has been ranked as being in the top 10 of the United States. Our doctoral program contributes to this terrific reputation. So let's now turn our, our attention to the doctoral program. I'd like to stress that our doctoral program is a competitive and rigorous program because we want our graduates to be very well positioned in the labor market and we want them to make important contributions to social work scholarship, research, and policy. As indicated on this slide, our program has been designed to prepare scholars committed to pursue knowledge that will advance the field of social welfare and social work practice. This is the impact we want to have. In order for our students to become leaders, both as researchers and teachers, we help you develop an area of eminence. That is, you will master a substantive area and gain significant methodological expertise. Finally, we offer a doctoral studies program because we believe that research and teaching are essential strategies for addressing today's complex social problems 
and that meaningful and sustainable social change will depend on the expertise of sophisticated researchers, scholars, and policymakers. The structure of our doctoral studies program helps our students to reach these compelling goals. One of the unique aspects of our program is that we have three pathways for students interested in pursuing a doctoral education. There are several special features of the PhD program at Boston College, but on this side we have depicted the three structures we've established for students to pursue their doctorates. Let's first talk about our MSW PhD program. As we mentioned earlier in this webinar, some applicants have a master's degree but not an MSW. If they anticipate teaching at a school of social work and would like to be able to teach practice courses, they might decide to apply to our combined MSW PhD program, which allows you to receive both degrees in a shorter period of time than if you did them separately. The second program is our PhD in social work. We sometimes think about this pathway as being similar to a traditional doctoral studies program. The second pathway is generally pursued by those with a master's degree in social work. However, I do want to stress that we do have some students who have a master's in an allied discipline but not an MSW. Finally, with a grant supported by Santander, we have partnerships with two Jesuit universities in Mexico. The students in this program enter through our International Social Welfare Doctoral Program. It allows students to complete the first year of their Social Welfare Doctoral Program at their home university. Then they come to campus for about two years of coursework and generally return, return to their home universities while working on their dissertation. Some applicants get a bit confused by the name on the International Social Welfare Program and think that all international students should apply to this program. Unless applicants are affiliated with the partner universities in Mexico, they would generally apply either to our MSW PhD program or the PhD in Social Work program, even if their home country is not the United States. So for instance, if your primary residence is in China or Nigeria, you would not apply to the International Social Welfare Program, but rather you would apply either to the combined MSW PhD program or the PhD in social work. Let me emphasize that while we have created these three pathways, for many of the courses students come together and create a shared experience. For example, during the first year of the doctoral program, two of our classes are offered online so that the students from our PhD in social work and those in the International Social Welfare Program are in the same class. On this side, you can see that most of you indicated to us that you're interested in our social work PhD program. However, some of you are also considering the joint degree program with the MSW and PhD program. Let's talk a little bit about your doctoral experience. This slide provides you with an example of the flow of the doctoral studies experience for those of you who are in the social work doctoral program. While the specific electives and the pace of some aspects of the program do vary. This diagram provides you with a sense about your coursework and other requirements. Please do keep in mind that the pacing and sequence is different for those in the MSW PhD program as well as for those in the International Social Welfare program. Let me walk you through the diagram, starting with the year one arrow. As you can see, most students take eight or even nine courses during the first year, with one of those courses being taught in the summer of your first year. Typically, you will take six required courses and two or three electives. I'll talk a bit more about the electives in just a few minutes. At the end of your first year, 
you'll take the first part of your comprehensive exams. The questions on the exams draw from the content of the courses you took during your first year. Our comprehensive exams are graded on a pass-fail basis. In the second year, students typically take six or maybe seven courses. In addition, you'll work with a mentor on a research project as a research assistant for at least six hours each week. Most of our doctoral students also begin to work on a second part of their comprehensives in the second year. This project's called a publishable paper because we require that you work with a mentor to produce a paper that could be submitted to an academic journal. The good news is that most of our students do actually submit these papers and many of them have been published. Let's now focus on year three. This is the year when you'll get some teaching experience because each student becomes a teaching assistant for the master's research classes which focus on research design and program evaluation. You will also continue with your courses. I want to mention another strength of our program. We have a required course that most students take in year three, which prepares you to become a strong classroom teacher. One of our faculty members, Dr. Katie McGinnis Dietrich, who has received a number of awards for her own teaching, teaches the special course. By the end of year three, most students can fulfill the course credit requirements needed for graduation with an additional three courses needed. But some students take more courses during that year. Once you've defended your publishable paper and have taken a special seminar, which we call your dissertation seminar, you will likely devote two semesters to your dissertation research and writing. Now I know that's a lot of information to share with you. The one thing that I do want to mention is that our program attempts to strike a balance between structure and choice. So while we do have some required courses that will introduce you to content we believe virtually every advanced scholar should know, our students also have access to a wide range of electives. So let's move on to the electives. Students use the electives to develop scholarship eminence in a substantive area such as substance abuse or immigration. In addition, the electives offer you opportunities to de deepen skills and competencies with statistical analysis. On this slide, we've just listed a few of the options for you. So you'll notice that you will take two advanced theory courses. While these are required classes, you would get the choice of selecting which theory classes are most of interest to you. You will also take an introduction to statistics classes and data analysis if you so choose during your first year. Again, that would be an elective because your other statistics courses would be required. You have options of taking a multi-level as well as longitudinal data analysis. And there are other advanced statistical courses available to you. There are advanced seminars in selected social welfare topics, courses in advanced research design, and of course, you will be looking for court advanced courses in your substantive area. I should point out that we encourage our students to remember they have many options for their electives, not only at the School of Social Work, but also at other Boston College schools and departments. For example, many of our students take doctoral level courses in the sociology department, the psychology department, at the School of Education, and at the School of Nursing. But that's not all of your choices. In addition to the resources right here at Boston College, you should know that you can take courses at other universities in the Boston area. Boston College is a member of a university consortium, which allows you to register for doctoral level courses at Boston University, Brandeis University, Tufts University, as well as the Women's Consortium at Harvard, MIT, and Northeastern. One of the advantages of our relationships with these other universities is that you can establish connections with top scholars at those universities. 
This can be particularly helpful when you start to think about your dissertation committee. While at least two members of your committee will be faculty members at the Graduate School of Social Work, the other member or members could either be from other departments or schools at Boston College or from these other universities. As an aside, the far majority of you who joined the webinar today told us that you have visited Boston before. We hope that you think our city is as awesome as we do. As I suggested earlier in the seminar, during the second year of your studies, you'll identify a research project with a graduate school of social work faculty member that you can participate in. Sometimes this project is linked to the requirement of your publishable paper. And in many cases, this will result in an academic publication. While many students decide to work with their primary mentors, others want to extend their professional networks and seek out ongoing projects at research centers established at Boston College. Some of our students also want to deepen their research experience and pursue independent study research projects. Finally, in some cases, students are able to obtain part-time employment, for example, during the summer as a researcher. On this slide, we have listed just some of the research centers at Boston College. We've put those centers affiliated with our own Graduate School of Social Work in bold font. The important thing for applicants to understand is that there are a number of research opportunities for you to engage in almost as soon as you arrive at Boston College. Since I mentioned the possibility of part-time employment, let me stress that our program is generally considered a full-time program. Some of our students uh, seek teaching opportunities, but we want you to be able to devote considerable attention to your studies. And so for that reason, we, consider you, uh, we provide you with a financial support package. Most students at the Boston College Graduate School of Social Work receive a four-year financial aid package worth more than $125,000. As indicated on this slide, tuition is covered, plus the students receive a living stipend of $20,000 per year. Boston College also awards a diversity fellowship each year that provides an additional year of support to students who receive this honor. Some students have successfully competed for national dissertation grants, which allows the students to access additional funds. Finally, students have received scholarships and awards from organizations such as the Sarah Haley Memorial Fund Social Work Scholarship in Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, or the Association for Gerontology Education in Social Work Pre-Dissertation Initiative. In summary, we make a commitment to work with our accepted students to address the financial obligations of doctoral studies. Before we turn our attention to the process of applying to the doctoral program, let me remind you that you should be thinking about focusing in on programs that will be a good fit for you. So what do I mean by that? Well, there are several things you will want to assess. First, is there one or more faculty member who shares some of your interests and passions? This common ground is important for you to establish a good relationship with a mentor. Secondly, you'll want to be sure that your goals are similar to the goals of our program. At the Boston College Graduate School of Social Work, we put an emphasis on training scholars and academics. Other programs focus on preparing people for advanced practice. It's important that you select a program that will help get you where you want to go. Finally, you'll want a program that will challenge you in all the right ways. Boston College is a world-class university, and we want to encourage the top talent to apply to our program. Let me remind you that our applications are completed online. The complete application is due December 15th, so please don't wait till the last moment. 
On this slide, we've indicated how you can locate the application process on the Boston College Graduate School of Social Work website. You'll notice that you can go through the Admissions tab, and then on the left-hand navigation bar, you'll see that you can find the checklist and process, as well as the form that will allow you to apply online. This information about the logistics of applying is also online. While the application program guides you through the process, please don't hesitate to contact us if you encounter any problems. So, what are some of the things you need to remember that you'll be needing? First, you'll need three references. Sometimes people ask us whether it's helpful to have more than three references. Generally, three references are totally adequate, so it's not necessary for you to identify more than the three people. The second thing you'll notice is that for non-native English speakers, we will ask you to send us your TOEFL scores. You need to be thinking about sending us a writing sample, and in addition, you want to be sure that you spend some time on the third bullet, which is your personal statement. As always, if you have questions, first consult our website, and then please feel comfortable to either email us at gsswdoc at gmail.com or feel free to call us at 617-552-4064. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Good night.